bird dog had a choice of being a pointer or a retriever. Now, which one do you want to be? <laughs> Look, don't you want to learn a trade? Do you want to spend the rest of your life on the bottom rung of the ladder of dogdom? I didn't get where I am sitting around wagging my tail, bumming dog biscuits, and barking the train in. <laughs> I wish you want to be a pointer or a retriever. <laughs> pointer. Okay. Now we'll imagine that Wilbur here is a pheasant. Now this here is the accepted procedure of pheasant pointing. The dog, which is you, sniffs his way across the field. <laughs> On getting the pheasant in his scent, he freezes to a point position, making a human error of himself. Nose pointed toward pheasant, tail pointing straight out. You don't move so as not to alarm the bird. No talking, no scratching, no tail wagging. Now, you got any questions so far? Just one. Yeah, what is it? Oh, hi, Keith. Would you mind telling me what you're doing? Well, he's trying to teach bird brain here to be a bird dog. Uncle Joe, I thought I asked you to get the hand car and go into Hooterville and find out where the cannonball's been all day. Ah, there's nothing wrong with it. Well, maybe they had a wreck. Goes too slow for a worthwhile one. Well, maybe, maybe the wheels went off the wheels track. Wheels always roll right back on the well, track. Well, something happened to him, and I'd like to find out. Now, will you please put the hand car on the tracks, and let's take a run into Hooterville. What about the hunting lesson? Well, the dog will give it to you when we get back. <laughs> How she look? Kind of peaked. You would too if you just laid five little white eggs. <laughs> uh, you think we ought to give her a blanket or something? Boy, she don't need a blanket. Well, how about a magazine to pass the time? <laughs> Leave her alone. Okay. If you want anything, just chirp. <laughs> Train. I told you nothing's happened to it. What's that ladder leaning against it for? Probably to keep the engine from tipping over. <laughs> Floyd! Charlie! What are you doing? <laughs> of all the dumb mongrels, you ain't supposed to point words. <laughs> Unpoint. Now go find a live bird. Kate. Will you look at that untalented Airedale pointing the locomotive? <laughs> Does that look like a live bird? You need glasses. <laughs> Maybe he's trying to tell you something. Yeah, how stupid he is. If I ever take him hunting with me, don't count on one of us coming back. He's a bad shot, too. <laughs> Put me down. Come on, Doc. Here you let go of me. Hi, Kate. Well, hi. Somebody sick? Yes, these two right here. They want me to make a house call on a bird. Huh? Kate, guess what's on the smokestack? A condemned notice? <laughs> there is not. There's a nest with five little white eggs in it. What? Me and Charlie's going to be fathers. <laughs> well, congratulations. Have a cigar. Thanks. Give me that. See, Uncle Joe, the dog didn't know what he was pointing at. So you got lucky. What are you waiting for, Doc? Up the ladder. Come on, I'll have you. No, no, I'm not climbing up any ladder. Well, in her condition, we can't take her to your office. It wouldn't do any good anyhow. I don't take care of birds. Well, what about that hippopotamus oath you doctors are always taking on TV? Hippopotamus? If you can take care of hippopotamuses, you can take care of birds. They're both the same kind of different animals. You must be referring to the Hippocratic Oath. Hippocratic! Well, whatever he's referring to, you ought to live up to it. Or else turn in your TV set. You're a disgrace to it. Now, boys, you're being a little unreasonable. Doc has all he can do to take care of his people patients. And birds ain't people. They aren't other birds. And why does a bird need a doctor anyway? 
No kids of mine's going to be born into this world unattended. If she just laid her eggs today, they won't hatch for more than two weeks. Are you the doctor in this case? No. Then mind your own business. Simmer down. Fellas, I'm surprised at you. Doc has never refused to take care of anyone or anything as long as they need taken care of. We're sorry, Doc. I guess we was a little edgy. Yeah, it was quite a shock to go out for lunch a bachelor and come back a father. <laughs> I guess it would be. Case of emergency, let me know. I'll get here just as fast as I can. Thanks, Doc. Hippopotamus oath. Hip. <laughs> I don't see why in heck I didn't go into my father's feed store. You see, everything's gonna be fine. Yeah, we'll get that bird nest out of there and you can run us back out home. We're not running the train. What? It's going to stay right here until we hear the patter of little feet. <laughs> Hoodabelle Cannonball gets the bird. <laughs> morning, Mr. Bedlow. Good morning, Evans. How are you this morning? You won't flog me, sir? <laughs> flog you? What's the matter with you? The way you said, good morning, Evans. You're in a horrible mood. <laughs> I'm in an excellent mood. I found a new hobby. Collecting antique thumb screws. <laughs> Bird watching. Here, read this. Aloud. Homer Bedlow, the genial and jovial manager of the CNFW Railroad, announced today that he's temporarily suspending service on the company's Hooterville branch line, pending the hatching of five tiny little white eggs, which occupy a nest on the smokestack of the branch line's crack train, the Hooterville Cannonball. <laughs> crack train. I'd like to meet the moron who said that. How do you do? <laughs> you mean you? Read on. Mr. Bedlow stated firmly the train will not run until the eggs have hatched. Motherhood comes before anything. You should sue the paper for misquoting you. Why? Right, that's what I said. When I first heard about the little mother, I called the newspaper and arranged to have them send a photographer to Hooterville to make this picture. But Mr. Bedlow... Evans, how long have I been trying to shut down the Hooterville cannonball? It's been a lifelong project. And have I been successful? No. Well, what I haven't been able to accomplish... Nature has. Somebody down there likes me. <laughs> but, sir, when the eggs hatch, the cannonball will roll again. You know, Evans, when you first came in here, I took a look at you and I said, there's a young man who has the makings of a first-class fink. <laughs> You've been a great disappointment to me. I'm sorry, sir. Can't your puny mind grasp the sneaky elements of this situation? Why does a train run? Well, you put coal in the engine, and that makes no, steam. No, no, no. A train runs because it has a franchise with the State Railroad Commission. Now, the franchise for the Hooterville branch line requires that a train, that is, an engine and a coach, that's all the miserable equipment they have anyway, complete a round-trip run between Hooterville and Pixley at least once every two weeks, or else they cancel the franchise. I see. And since it takes two weeks for the eggs to hatch... I've already alerted Williams of the State Railroad Commission. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Oh, what's your hurry? Well, Billy Joe's typing up my English homework, and I have to look up a word in the dictionary. Uh. Thanks. I'll bring it right back. Betty Joe. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I can't bend over.
Hi, Kate. Uncle Joe! What's the matter? Oh, would you get the book? Kate, I was just getting ready to read the paper. My back's killing me. You know how many times I pumped that hand car to Hooterville and back today? Six. All on account of that stupid bird. The book! Oh, Kate. Fifty exercises to do at home. You ought to do the easy ones first, Kate. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Those exercises will do you a lot of good. <laughs> Where's the sack of flour I asked you to bring me home from Sam's? Oh, the dog's bringing it. What? <laughs> For heaven's sakes. Well, after pumping that hand car, I couldn't bend to pick it up. Uncle Joe. It's the bird's fault and Charlie and Floyd's. They should know better than to go away and leave that smokestack unguarded with the air full of flying motherhood. I don't see why they're so set against moving that nest. You can't. If you did, the mother bird would abandon the eggs. Well, if she don't care for them, why should we? <laughs> don't touch that. I have to look up the spelling of another word. What word? Philatelist. Philatelist? That's easy. F-I-L-L. -L. Take the dictionary and put this under the leg. What's the matter with him? That ain't a bird. 38 breeds of dog, and we have to get stuck with this lunkhead. Where's the dictionary? Here. Philatelist. Mom, did you see this? It's the bird. And there's a story about it. What does it say? I can't see it without my specs. Here I can. <laughs> it says Homer Bedlow is shutting down the branch line to give the eggs a chance to hatch. He's also in favor of motherhood. That doesn't sound like Mr. Bedlow. It's more like Homer to have the bird arrested for trespassing on railroad property. Yeah. Or he's up to something. Yeah, but what? The usual. Shutting down the branch line forever and putting the shady rest out of business. The same suspicious Mrs. Bradley, eh? Homer Bedlam. <laughs> what was he doing? Pointing out a vulture. Bradley, <laughs> how are you? Girls? We're fine till you walked in. Now, Betty Jo, there's no need to be impolite to Mr. Bedlow. Uncle Joe and I'll take care of that. Now, what do you want here, Homer? A room. We're all full up. Since when? Since you said you wanted a room. <laughs> Since the railroad isn't running, I don't see why you're oversupplied with guests. Well, the only one available is $700 a night. That's without towels and bathroom privilege. <laughs> if you want to see it, I'll have the girls take the mops and brooms out of it. Aww. Mrs. Bradley, there's no reason for you to act like that. I didn't come down here to do you any harm. Who did you come down here to do harm to? The birds and her eggs. <laughs> what have you got up your sleeve, Mr. Bedlow? Nothing, nothing. It just isn't like you to be in favor of motherhood. Well, why not? I had a mother once myself. Did she ever come forward and admit it? <laughs> now, look here, Carson. I won't take that you from know, you. No, Homer. We've been playing dirty pool for years. And it just comes very hard for me to swallow this story you put in the paper. It does, huh? Yes, it does. Now, would you believe it if I told you I don't care a hoot for that bird or her little eggs? Yes, I would. Well, I admit it. Personally, I hate birds singing and tweeting, laying their silly eggs in inconvenient places. But as an official of the CNFW Railroad, I love that bird. 
He's worth millions to us in publicity. A big, giant railroad grinding its wheels to a halt to let a little bird give birth to her young. It's a new image we're giving to the public. The railroad with a heart. Uh, I forgot to mail these dismissal notices, didn't I? Mom, what do you think? It makes sense. I wouldn't trust him within a ten-foot pole. Me either. I said it makes sense. I didn't say I trusted him. Homer, you can have your room if you want it. But we're going to be watching you like a hawk to make sure that you don't do anything to that little bird or her eggs. Oh, believe me, Mrs. Bradley, I'm more interested than you are in not harming that little bird. I want those eggs to hatch no matter how long it takes. <laughs> Floyd! <laughs> You'll be right out. Floyd, Smoot, did you? Oh, hi, Kate. Hi, Joe. Hi, Charlie. Uh, Uncle Joe and I brought you your supper. Oh, Kate, you've been bringing us our dinner every day for a week. You don't have to. She does, too. You won't eat my cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Try some fried chicken. Kate, you didn't bring along any of them hardball eggs, did you? No. Good. I just can't eat them hard-boiled eggs when she's looking at me. Seems to upset her. How is Lady Bird? <laughs> she says she's fine. Has <laughs> Bedlow been around here today? Yeah, twice. Did he try anything? No, he just straightened that sign he put up and told us not to worry about the train not running. Beats us, Kate. Me too. But one thing you can be sure of, Homer Bedlow has some dirty scheme cooking in that double-dealing mind of his. <laughs> Come out here. I don't want to be overheard in there. Bedlow, if you're using the State Railroad Commission to do your dirty work, I'm doing the Railroad Commission a great service. You should have canceled the franchise of the Cannonball years ago. Bedlow, there's nothing the matter with that little train. I don't think you have any right Williams, to try to... you are a public official. You're not paid to think. Now, the terms of the franchise are crystal clear. That train must make a round trip once every two weeks. One week has passed and it hasn't moved. Another week and it'll never move. <laughs> About eight or nine more days, I'd say, Kate. Too long. They gotta be out and peeping in seven. Isn't there any way you can hurry them? 
Betty Jo, I've been doctoring for a long while, and there's one thing I've learned for sure. Whether it's a baby bird, a baby chick, a baby pig, or a baby baby, you can't hurry them into this world. Then I guess this is the end of the cannonball. Why don't we just move the nest? That'd be the end of the birds. Well, which is more important, the birds or the train? That's for Charlie and Floyd to decide. Well, the train's mighty important to us. Yeah, but so's our family. <laughs> we still got a whole week to wait for next Tuesday, maybe by then. Yeah. Come on, little mother. Get hot. <laughs> I take it there hasn't been any action, eh? Oh, you needn't feel so badly. In another month's time, the rails will be gone, and there'll be nothing left of the branch line except a weed-covered roadbed from here to Pixley. But think of how it'll beautify the countryside. I'm sorry, folks. There's nothing to be sorry about. It's their own silly sentimentality that made it possible for my evil plan to triumph. <laughs> Love that bird. <laughs> Mr. Williams, isn't there anything you can do? I'd bend over backwards to help. There's no way out. The franchise clearly states that an engine and coach has to make a round-trip run from here to Pixley every two weeks. Two weeks will be up in less than six hours. An engine and coach, huh? That's right, Mrs. Bradley. Mr. Williams, start bending. How much time we got, Mr. Williams? Just about a minute. Love that little bird. They've got to make it. Here they come. Two seconds. Oh, yeah! I protest. I protest. Quiet. We almost didn't make it up Bleaker's Hill coming out of Pixley. Now, see here, Williams. You're not going to let him get away with this, are you? It's a coach. The stagecoach that Lem Waller's dad ran between here and Pixley long before the cannonball. Well, you're lucky it's still around. You're going to need it. Now that the cannonball isn't going to be running anymore. What do you mean? The franchise clearly called for an engine and a coach. Well, where's the engine? There it is. Uncle Joe's wooden engine. <laughs> okay, Mr. Williams? It's all right with me. <laughs> now, see here, Williams, I'm going to call the governor. Yes, and while you're doing that, I'll call the newspapers and tell them the truth about the C&FW, the railroad with a heart of stone. <laughs> well, you, you, you can't do that. They'll fire me. I'll lose my pension. <laughs> nice engine and coach, isn't it? Nicest engine I ever saw. Love that bird? Love that bird. Mom, Mom, quick, call the doctor. This has been a Filmways presentation.